What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve, and today we have a singles format battle against Trainer Connor. Now, as you can see, I'm bringing Zoroark alongside a ghost type because those shenanigans are fun. Uh, Zoroark being weak to fighting types, disguising it as Trevenant, and discouraging some of those fighting type moves is always a nice pair up. Furthermore, it can also disguise itself as Diggersby because Diggersby can use U-Turn. Now, on my opponent's side of the field, I don't really have any good answers for Jellicent or Magnazone. Uh, especially Scarf Zone, particularly, just because Scarf Zone would outspeed my Diggers B, and of course Flash Cannon puts relatively large dents in my team, except for Metagross, who might be trapped by a hidden power, fire, or ground. So, uh, between that and being at risk from fire type spam, from Darmanitan, which is often scarfed as well, I, I knew I had my work cut out for me in this match. Uh, the most important things, of course, were going to be to keep Zoroark healthy, as Sucker Punch can hit a lot of these Pokemon hard, except for Clefable, uh, and I don't have to worry about him being faster than me. And of course, Diggersby is a nice win condition, because if I can get up a Swords Dance, I can basically sweep his team with Quick Attack. Uh, so I had a couple of options as far as ways to win. Mega Metagross, of course, can just punch holes in his team, so I would have to play a little bit more carefully with it. And um, yeah, so let's get right into the match. Now, at the beginning of this match, I was actually expecting my opponent to lead off with uh, Mamoswine to set up rocks, and he actually surprises me. He leads with Jellicent. I did not see that coming. Jellicent is not the type of thing you see leading a lot, just because it's slow, unless it's a Trick Room type scenario. I didn't really have a Trick Room center team, so I didn't expect that. I actually led with Zoroark, and figuring that he would, might go for a burn with his uh, Jellicent, I go out into Trevenant, as he did not know that that was my Zoroark. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't really have anything that I want to switch into Magnezone, and I really need to figure out its set. Flash Cannon is hitting pretty hard, and I didn't really have any moves on this particular Trevenant to deal with it. This Trevenant has Horn Leech and um, Shadow Claw alongside Will-O-Wisp and Leech Seed. So I was just trying to make sure at the end of the day when Trevenant switched out, that not only did I break Magnezone sturdy, but I put it uh, in range so that I can finish it off with um, maybe not necessarily a priority attack, but something a little bit weaker. I wanted to make sure it was in a good range for me to finish it off. Um, and I could have switched in Metagross at any point here, but I was afraid that, uh, number one, I don't have Earthquake on that particular Mega Metagross, so I didn't think that Zen Headbutt or even uh, the even lesser effective Steel-type move would get the job done. So I go back on into Zoroark here, or actually, I'm sorry, I go out into my actual... Zoroark, again, still disguised as Metagross, and I go for Flamethrower, hoping that he stays in, trying to trap me. But since he switched out, I figure he was either Specs or Scarfed. And I hit Jellicent on the way in, thereby revealing that I am Zoroark, so that sucked. That kind of blew that disguise. Uh, I go out on the floor just expecting the burn, or maybe even expecting a uh, just a Water-type new Skull trying to get a burn. This is a good opportunity to just wish up and pass it off to something as Clefable comes in and starts Calm Minding. Not really what I wanted to deal with, um, especially if it's um, the Life Orb, Magic Arc Clefable. I can't even go out and whittle it down with anything. So, since he is Calm Mining, this is a good opportunity to switch in Metagross, even if he did attack with Flamethrower. I thought Metagross could live a plus one Flamethrower from a non invested Clefable, and then I would have gotten the HP back with Wish, but he keeps on Calm Mining, so I know I outspeed, and I figured an Iron Head would be enough to take him out, and it just barely fails to KO. Uh, he's able to Thunder Wave me, which sucks so very hard. Uh, I do have Aromatherapy on Aromatisse, not Aromatisse, excuse me, on Florges, but I I don't like being in a position where I'm forced to go out and heal it. Furthermore, he goes on into Jealous in here. I thought he would will wisp expecting me to switch, but he actually has Hex, so that's, I think I could have lived a Shadow Ball, but Hex is uh, 20 higher base power since I was Thunder Waved, is able to take on my Metagross, so that puts me way behind. I just I stayed in there just trying to go for Zen Headbutt or Thunder Punch, um, and that just didn't work out. Now here I go on to Rhyperior thinking that he had Scald. I knew I could live a single Scald because this Rhyperior is actually Eevee to live Scald from um, more bulky Pokemon like Jellicent, uh, but he actually has Surf. And so Surf is actually going to be able to one-hit KO me, and I'm unable to get any extra damage on uh, the Jellicent, and I really wanted to at least bring it down to half, maybe, maybe 60% with an Earthquake, uh, but I'm just unable to do that. So I go out into Diggersby, just, I figured an Earthquake would KO it, since he apparently has more offensive moves, 
and I just failed to KO it with an Earthquake too, so I just am coming up short in this match on the damage rolls greatly. So since Diggersby is burned, uh, I don't think it's going to be able to get the job done. And I actually switch out here expecting him to switch out, expecting me um, to try to just KO him with another Earthquake. And so he actually goes out in a Mammoth Swine. I really would have appreciated the, the burn damage on, not the burn, the Earthquake damage on Mammoth Swine, even though I was burned. But uh, we are just going to stay in here and take a couple of Icicle Shards to the face. Uh, I do like seeing Icicle Spear over Ice Shard and Icicle Crasher, because that means I don't have the chance of flinching. And he really needs four or five hits in order to really threaten my floor just out. He switches up and goes for Earthquake. Because this is a max HP, max defense uh, floor, just I am able to take that much more admirably than I expected to take it, really. Uh, and that means I'm just able to wish and get my HP back up or pass a wish off to something else. Now, as he switches out here into uh, Magnezone, I was just going to protect to get my wish back. I really was in a position where I needed to make sure I kept my forges because it is physically defensive. It can take at least a hit from Darmanitan and from Star Raptor. So I needed it around for sure. Now he goes on into Magnezone. Since it's burned, I don't see any reason to just see what he locks himself into. Uh, he is in a position where he kind of has to predict what I'm going out into. And I thought he would switch here since I just stayed in and protected. And that was an opportunity for me to wish up again, but he just stays in and goes for flash cannon. So a little bit of an over prediction on my part really puts floor just in low HP. And at this point, I don't think he can actually switch out and survive stealth rock. So I know he has to stay in and go for flash cannon and I just get to protect and get my HP back. So a little bit of a stall there with floor just, but since I played so, uh, Poorly around that Jellison earlier, I really needed to make sure this Magnezone was removed from the battle. Uh, especially if it were Scarfed. The main thing there, I think it were Specs just based on the damage it was doing. But uh, it did fail to KO Florges, which is a, defense, a physically defensive Florges. So I, I'm going to say that it was Scarfed. Uh, and I wanted to see what Star Raptor locked itself into here. It just goes for a double edge. And with that prior damage, I figured I could KO it with a quick attack from my Diggersby. And so he's actually going to switch out, and it's unfortunate that I just went for uh, a different attacking move there. Because um, I tried to Sucker Punch bringing in my Zoroark. So I I figured, okay, I'm going to bring in Diggersby, feign the, fe feign the Quick Attack, and he's going to go into something else. But this is unfortunate because I can't one-hit KO the Jellicent from that range. My only other attacking options are U-Turn, Sucker Punch, uh, Hidden Power, Ice, and Flamethrower. And so Flamethrower was the most powerful thing I had. I figured I could KO the Jellicent at that lower range, and I just, he literally lived with one HP, he told me later. And so now that puts me in a position where I have to let Zorar get burned, um, hoping that he'll attack me so that I can hit him with a Sucker Punch, because just none of these other moves are going to do anything. So I'm just going to keep on going for Sucker Punch. Uh, I didn't want to switch out into my actual, actual Diggers B here, just because I need it to win this battle, and if it gets killed by a Surf, then I definitely can't win. And so I am able to hit him with a Sucker Punch finally as he KOs me with Surf. And if I had just played that a little bit better, Jellicent wouldn't even be here. So his Jellicent is back up to about half health. And I don't know if my Diggers B can actually KO it from that range. Just the way it's been taking hits this whole battle. Um, so we're going to go for Earthquake. Fortunately, I'm able to KO it. Uh, but at this point in the match, I'm just so far behind with Diggers B being my last Pokemon. He has the opportunity to hit me with an Ice Shard. He could hit me with Quick Attack from possibly Star Raptor. And of course, if his Darmanitan is Scarf, then he'll be faster there. So it's it's a little tough at this point in the match. Um, and I didn't really have an opportunity to set up a Swords Dance. So it really comes down to whether or not I can KO this Darmanitan here with Quick Attack. And I just, once again, barely miss out on the KO. Really needed some spike support this battle. Because just I was not getting the damage rolls that I needed, or I just didn't have a chance to KO at all. So, but that was actually a really good match. Props to him for playing the way he did. He really caught me off guard with his unorthodox Jellison set, Hex and Surf over Scald or Shadow Ball for sure. Very interesting. But I hope you guys enjoyed the battle, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye bye now.